I just put on my 100th machine on Hank the Box and it's been quite the journey. In this video, I'm going to share with you five lessons that I learned along the way. Hi, my name is Kaiser Clark. I have over six years experience in cybersecurity and I currently work as a full-time penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker. And on this channel, I hope you grow your hacking and cybersecurity knowledge. Lesson number one, your rank doesn't matter that much. So your rank is mostly a snapshot in time. You can actually pwn 20, 30 boxes in a couple months and get a high rank in theory. However, that doesn't matter that much to employers because employers are really looking for consistency. And what is reflective of consistency is your overall number of boxes pwned. So I found that on LinkedIn, got a lot of people celebrating my consistency more so than my overall rank. Now I have achieved some pretty high ranks in Hack the Box seasons, however, people really don't care that much. But what people do care about and what people notice is when you pwn machines back to back to back to back to back to back. If you're only poning, you know, 20 boxes in a month or two, people will forget about you after you stop. So the main thing with Hack the Box, in my opinion, is consistency. And that's one of the reasons why I like to do Hack the Box streams on Thursdays and Sundays every single week without fail. Because I've gotten a lot of good feedback from people in the field and employers when I demonstrate the consistency. And I would say the consistency matters more than the rank. And if you're unfamiliar with how a platform works, there's two different classifications of hack box machines. There's active machines and there's retired machines. Active machines are machines that actually contribute to your rank. Retire machines do not contribute to your rank. And all active machines will eventually get retired. So if you pwn several active machines and then they go into retirement, you actually lose points for those machines as they transition from active to retired. So in order to keep your rank, you have to constantly do active machines over and over and over and over and over, which is cool if you are concerned about your rank. However, like I said earlier, your rank isn't all that important. So I recommend going after retired machines because retired machines have walkthroughs and write-ups. Lesson number two, there's no shame in using guided mode or walkthroughs. So if you're unfamiliar what guided mode is, guided mode is a mode that is in Hack the Box for all the easy machines and now recently the medium difficulty machines where when you get stuck, you could go to guided mode and you can get a nudge or a hint. It doesn't give you the answer, it doesn't give you the solution, it just gives you a little nudge in the right direction, which could be beneficial once you get stuck. Walkthrough, on the other hand, is a full-on solution to the problem. And my recommendation is this. If you spend an hour and a half to two hours and you're not making any progress, open up guide mode and see the hints and try to go from there. If you spend another half hour or so to an hour on guide mode and you're still not making progress, then open up a walkthrough and see how to progress to the next spot. And then once you progress to the next spot, then you want to get off of guide mode and off the walkthrough and then continue to go back to pwning the machine yourself if you have time. So if you watch my live streams on Sundays and Thursdays, I sometimes will open up guided mode and sometimes I open up walkthroughs. However, I usually spend at least two hours before I even touch guided mode. And then if I get stuck for another half hour or so, then I'm going to the walkthrough. And then if I'm running out of time on the stream, then I'll kind of use a walkthrough to help me get through it faster because I don't like to leave the audience hanging on my live streams. And uh, if I had more time, then I would probably use a walkthrough less, but I try to keep my streams around the four hour mark. And if I start going way over four hours, then I'm like, all right, let's start wrapping this up. I got to use the walkthrough. So if you're in a time crunch, walkthroughs are good. And if you're absolutely stuck, walkthroughs are good for that too. But there's no shame in using walkthroughs in guided mode. I do it all the time. And as you progress through the boxes and as you learn new skills, you will use guide mode and walkthroughs less and less. There's sometimes where I don't have to use guide mode at all. I can just pull in the box super easy and super quick because it fits in my skill sets. And then there's sometimes where I see technology that I've never seen before and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me open up guide mode and it throws me in the right direction. So once again, try your very best without using any hints or a walkthrough. But if you're stuck, do not beat your head into a brick wall 
get the nudge and potentially get the walkthrough. And in the long run, you will learn a lot this way and don't feel ashamed for using nudges. Lesson number three, you learn more and you learn faster with a team. So if you don't know, active machines are not allowed to have write-ups, which is why I recommend going after retire machines. However, if you are on those active machines, if you are working with a team, which is completely allowed, Hack the Boxes told us this, that you are allowed to work on a team. The only rule is that that team can't be open to the public. So it has to be a private team only. And you can invite a handful of friends and you guys can work on the active machines together. And that's actually how the top players are getting high ranks is because there's a group of people that work together and get the box. And if you're concerned with your rank and you want to go out to active machines, that's a good way to get a high rank. But more importantly, when I first got an active box, I actually cared about my rank and I learned a lot from the team that I was on. So if you're doing active machines, I definitely highly recommend having a team. And if you are doing retiring machines, retiring machines could also benefit from having a team. However, I feel like a team isn't needed as much for retiring machines because there's tons of walkthroughs that you can get on retiring machines. But for active machines, if you really are trying to be competitive, the team is the way to go. Before we dive into the next lesson, do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. Lesson number four, hack the box and CTF challenges are not like real world pen testing at all, but it's the best practice you can get to help you refine your real world pen testing skills. Just the act of firing at the machine and doing the in-map scans and poking and probing at a box and getting those hands on keyboard reps in actually translates into real world pen testing skills. So when I'm on a real world pen testing engagement, my fingers just do its thing because I constantly practice hack the box. So originally I was using hack the box to help me land my first job, but now I use hack the box to keep my skills sharp. And it's incredibly important to constantly be on the keyboard and practicing keeping your skills sharp in your off time because you don't actually use the keyboard that much while you're on the job because there's so many other things you have to do other than just pen testing you have to write reports you have to talk to clients and you have to do all kinds of other stuff and you're not banging at the keyboard all day every day in your pen testing job contrary to popular belief so it's really important to get your hands on keyboard skills in your off time. And last but not least, lesson number five, you learn something new on every machine. Every time I get on a box, there is some lesson that I learn. I learn something new on every single box. In some boxes, I know 90% of the stuff, but there's usually one or two things that I'll get hung up on. And then sometimes there's a bunch of things I get hung up on, but even the easiest machines for me, it is not always the straightest path forward because I always get hung up on something along the way, even on the ones that don't take me that much to bone. Which is why I think Hack the Box is some of the best practice you can get for the money. And like I said already, I do Hack the Box live streams every Thursday and Sunday, but it's more than just a live stream. And it's also an Ask Me Anything, so you can come in the stream, hang out, have fun, and you can ask me anything you want related to hacking cybersecurity. And if you miss the live streams, don't worry, all the past broadcasts are here on my YouTube channel. And if you want to learn more about Hack the Box, you definitely have to check out this video right here where I compare Hack the Box versus Try Hack Me. It's actually the deepest, most comprehensive Try Hack Me versus Hack the Box video here on YouTube, so you can't miss it.